So, how much experience you got? None, barely, None. like. And what, what, what camera have you got? Whichever one you handed to me. <laughs> You're a wizard. Are you doing anything professional? Anything? No, I'm literally today? showing uh, my friend here how to take a picture. That was it. Welcome back. This is Photo How To, a channel completely dedicated to photography. This is Rory, a young student currently studying film and drama. I should also add, he has never picked up a camera before. So this is actually quite exciting because he has got no idea about composition, camera settings, lighting, and basically how to operate a camera. But I know he is gonna succeed today, and that is purely because he has got that one ingredient, the one thing you need to succeed in photography. And and that is a willingness to learn. Anyone who's picked up a camera, you've all been down this path. When you're first starting out, it's always difficult to know and understand how you can control and manipulate light. So I'm gonna have a look now at Rory's photographs. Now what I will add, these are unedited. These are JPEG images out of Z62. So we've all been there, we've sat there, we scratched our heads and thought, I really don't know how to start. Now these first images were taken at London Bridge Tube Station. Uh, we were walking along, and to be honest, uh, lens caps are off, we're ready to shoot. The tube station was really, really busy. But I just saw this cast a light on the floor, and as I mentioned before, we're shooting in harsh sunlight. So you want to use the harsh sunlight against the shadows. And I just thought this could be a really good way of creating a little bit of street photography by illuminating people's legs and feet as they come through the shot. So I explained to Rory that what you'll need to do to capture this shot is you need to darken the shadow a little bit more, underexpose it as I've mentioned before. And then you're gonna use the cast of light basically to light up your subject. So everything is done within the camera. Now ideally what I would have liked to have had is someone with a pair of red high heels coming through, but... <laughs> <laughs> the chances of that happening are absolute minimal. This is also a really busy place. So there are a lot of people walking through, so you've got to time it right. Ideally, you just want one leg, a pair of feet coming through the shot. You don't want to see lots and lots of people coming through because it's just going to look a mess. And I think Rory's done a fantastic job. As certainly as his first go at this. Exposure looks good. Detail looks good. His timing looks great. I think he's done a brilliant job with these. I thought the best way to learn is to head down to London and shoot some street photography, which I might add has its own challenges, including being stopped by security. Uh, I'm talking to you because I can see you have a professional camera. Um, are you doing anything professional? Anything? No, I'm literally today? showing uh, my friend here how to take a picture. That was it. Okay, all good. They're not okay. going on uh, YouTube or anything like that. So. Uh, YouTube, really like that. So, literally, just showing about to take pictures. Fantastic, that's great. Thanks very much. Before we dive in, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed to this channel, left the comment, and gave us a little thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. On with the video. Now, when you first start out photography, you may have no idea what you want to shoot. And I've covered this in previous videos. Check these ones out. Come out of London Bridge, and basically, we are directly under the shard. And there's a shot that I've shot here before. It's a bit more of an architectural shot rather than street photography, but when in Rome or London, you might as well take this shot. And I could have picked a subject that was a little bit simpler, like landscapes, portraits, or even wildlife. But these are not diverse enough. You really need to pick a subject that is gonna get you to use as many settings as possible within your camera to you understand how to operate your camera, but how to also control the light and also try a few tricks, which I'm gonna come on to later. So we're standing directly underneath the shard and I've told Rory basically to point his camera up and try and get a really nice composition. Now bear in mind you've gone from darker area, which is down on the ground, up to a really bright area, which is now the sky. So you've gotta change your exposure. As you'll see in this first image, it's overexposed. But correctly, Rory has now changed his exposure and to be honest, it looks really good. And if he was editing this, it could make it look even better. You could turn these black and white. Compositionally, they look really good. I would question, is the little building on the right hand side, is that offering anything to the image? In the last shot here, you'll see he's actually removed that and you've got a little bit of negative space. I like that better. But again, this is only down to personal preference. So we've arrived in England's busy capital and I've handed over my Z62 with a Nikkor 24 to 120 f4 telephoto lens. I've got the Z72 with a 24 to 70 f2.8. 
Well, the range is quite good to get you started. And basically, it gives you the opportunity to shoot wide aperture, but also narrow at the same time. Shooting at 24 mil will allow you to shoot a bigger scene. For example, if you want to shoot some architecture or a whole street. But then zooming in at 120 will also allow Rory to shoot from distance feeling a little bit more comfortable. Let's be honest, when you start shooting street photography, it can be unnerving and you need an element of courage. First time out here. That's all right. Yeah, cool. okay. We're literally out just trying different camera techniques. And learning photography is difficult enough. So if I can take that element away, then it just makes it a little bit easier when he's focusing hard with hum on his camera settings. In photography, you are gonna see a lot of videos, including some of mine in the future, which is gonna mention words like rule of thirds, composition, exposure. Well, in street photography, a lot of this goes right out the window. As we walk away from the shards, um, I like to look at things like bridges to use for framing. So now we're looking at a framing technique but you've got these big cast iron metal struts at the bottom which offer different frames different perspectives and it just looks really cool so i said to rory look try and get the shots so you've got the bridge at the top with these metal struts going across to try and frame and segregate parts of the shard in the background in these first photographs they look good the exposure looks really good they're underexposed which i think is perfect if you are going to edit these shots but i think when he zoomed in slightly it does look a little bit better the crop looks better on these shots again that's just down to personal preference Basically, you can bend the rules, and this is what I love about street photography. So I am also armed with a camera. I've got my trusty Z7 II. If you've not seen a video on how to set this up, check this out. But this is also my go-to camera. I use this to shoot pretty much anything. And I've also got my go-to lens, a 24 to 70 f2.8. I love this lens so much, it is awesome. So with any photograph, I explain to Rory that you need to start with visualizing your shot. Before you've taken your shot, visualize what you want to capture. The street photography is a form of expression, digital documentation of what you've seen and what you've experienced during your trip. So as I've mentioned, we have harsh sunlight. Now, you can use this to your advantage as long as you control the light. Now, if it's harsh sunlight, if I'm really honest, I tend to shoot in black and white. It just works really well with the harsh light against the really dark shadows. You can play one up against the other and you get a really nice looking image. But to do this, you really got to watch your exposure. What do you expose against? Do you expose against the shadow, the darker areas, or do you expose against the lighter areas? This is our first headache. I will always meet her against the lighter areas. The easiest way to explain this to you is if you are editing your shots, if you have an area that is overexposed, you are not gonna bring that back. No matter what magic tricks you've got, it is pretty much impossible to bring that back. However, if you underexpose, you can bring this back with your editing software as a rule, I usually shoot one to two stops underexposed when I'm shooting in harsh sunlight. There's quite a bit of edit in here to do afterwards. You really need to capture that detail to give you something to work with when you return to your editing software. Because at the end of the day, if you've overexposed your shot, it's game over. Okay, so as Rory's starting to become accustomed to his camera and the settings, etc., I've said to him, look, I think you're now at the stage where we can try a static panning shot. Static panning shot, I've not mentioned that before. What the hell is that? I've just made that up, if I'm really honest, but this is what I call it, because it's the best way I can describe it in my head so I know what I'm talking about in the future. What you have is you'll have a subject. For in this instance, I've stood next to the edge of the road and we've heard a fire engine coming on. I said, right, Rory, reduce your shutter speed down. You want to reduce it down to about an eighth to a sixth of a second. Put your focus on me. I'm going to take a deep breath and stand perfectly still as best I can. And you're going to capture the motion of the fire engine as it comes through the shot. It is potluck again. You could increase the shutter speed, maybe go up to a 25th. And hopefully, fingers crossed, most of them will remain in focus. But as I've mentioned before, I don't mind if there's a little bit of blur, a little bit of motion, because it's, it's telling the story of the scene that's in front of you. Not everything's static in the world. Hang on, hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's just wind the clock back here a little bit. I need to explain, just very, very briefly, the love triangle. Hang on, the photography love triangle. <laughs> ISO, aperture, shutter. So I want you to picture 
a triangle. This is, I'm not really explaining this very well. This is a lot of worse diagram stuff. Let's bring a diagram up. Here's a nice diagram. So you've got ISO, aperture, and shutter on each of those lines. It's the perfect triangle. All the sides match. They're all the same size, etc. which basically means in camera terms, your photograph is perfectly exposed. However, if you decide to move or adjust, let's say, for example, the aperture, that is going to impact the light that goes within your sensor into your camera and obviously this is also going to impact your shutter and your ISO. To get the right exposure you're going to have to adjust either your shutter speed or your ISO to accommodate that movement within your aperture. It's, it's one of those you'll start to think about oh I'm getting confused you're probably pulling your hair out I don't understand just think of a triangle perfect triangle bring it back up here it is my triangles are rubbish think about that if you move one of these lines they're not equal it basically means you've not got a great exposure you need to bring the exposure back perfectly so if you look here for example if we adjust the shutter speed the lines come back into play and you've got a good exposure I am going to do a more detailed video on this because I have to say this is really difficult it's better to show you on the camera for example so I will do a video out in the field with this to show you exactly how it works and show you what the exposure looks like on the back of my camera that's for a future video so please subscribe and hit the notification bell because I will do a more detailed video on this in the future. I do photography has made me look at things differently but when I shoot video now it's more cinematic because you're looking from a photography point of view the composition looks so much better. So what do you look for when you do street photography? Hi guys! I usually spend 30 to 40 minutes just walking around initially. Uh, I won't even take a photograph and I'm looking for certain things that basically capture my interest. Fishy in, here we go. So we are now near Tower Bridge and I found this really nice building with a lovely backdrop and I said to Roy, let's go to the side here and we're just gonna wait. This area wasn't overpopulated so we were being patient. I think we had to wait about 20 minutes for someone to walk through the shot. But as I explained that you wanna capture them to give them a bit of space to walk into and this shot here of the person walking through yeah there's a little slight blur but again as i mentioned before i don't mind that because it's showing motion in the shot but it's perfect because you've got all that negative space on the right hand side yeah it just works really really well it looks natural so let's quickly go through some scenarios you could have someone walking down the street they could be wearing something crazy and in london you are going to see a lot of crazy people but you might have a really nice backdrop at the same time so that's quite a nice shot you might see a really old building against a more modern building another really good one is seeing a sign and having someone standing next to it it's just a play on words pretty much but again that's street photography it's really interesting but they're really straightforward you can actually start getting really creative in fact i'm going to try something i have never done before but to capture a really good photograph this is where the photographer's creativity and flair comes into play so using nikon's mirrorless systems has some really amazing advantages so here's one really good example and i will as this does take practice the camera just doesn't do all the work a lot of the work is within the photographer and getting the control right one really good example is a panning shot I tend to do this a lot when I do street photography I just love movement in the shot but I also like pushing the camera to its limits so what's a panning shot so a panning shot is when you basically have something that's moving through your shot fast this could be a bike or a car for example you could shoot it fast shutter speed and you can do continuous high and you'll basically freeze frame it but it doesn't look real you want to add a bit of character a bit of drama within the photograph so why not reduce the shutter speed down and blur the background that looks absolutely amazing i will do a more detailed video on how to capture a panning shot what you'll need to do is basically reduce your shutter speed down to a level that you're happy with I'd start off around about a 50th maybe drop it down to a 25th of a second but really when you're shooting i would definitely throw it continuous high basically what you'll do is you're going to track track your subject through the shot you'll need to lock your arms in nice and tight and shoot them but you've got to try and hold the camera still and the lens still as possible because if you get too much shake your image is going to be completely blurred so another area quite an iconic shot and you probably have seen this on social media but i like to take this shot also is where you've got these modern buildings and this really cool sort of paving and in, in the background you've got tower bridge so you've got old with new and it looks really cool and this is basically where we got collared by security and told to stop shooting can you make that photograph any better have a go have a look 
Look around you, what could you do? What could you do to make this photograph better? Changing your angle is also key when you do street photography. Walk around, but don't just walk around, kneel down, lie on the floor, obviously where it's safe to do so. Stand on things if you can, obviously if it is safe to do so again. By looking at things at different heights, different levels, etc., will give you a different perspective, a different angle, a different kind of photograph, one that you may not have seen. Typical shots are reflections, they're really good. But if you wanna get a really good reflection, get down at the same level as the puddle and the reflection will look a lot better. Now, there are many terms out there of street photography, different terms, types of different shots, Shots. I've got my own and to be honest I have pinched some of theirs too and some of these you may have heard of. The first one is fishing. Fishing I like to use basically as a bit of an appetizer. Find a nice backdrop, something that looks really nice, really interesting and then literally line your shot up and wait. <laughs> Obviously this only works in an area where you've got people walking through because if there's nothing going on you're going to be waiting there for a very, very long time. That's fishing. You are literally just waiting. You've gone fishing. I mean, I don't know how many more times I can say fishing. Fishing, fishing, fishing. But you could take this one step further. If you are doing this type of shot, look for people that are of interest. Look at your backdrops and look at the colour. So, for example, if you had a really dark backdrop, you wouldn't really want to shoot someone who's also wearing dark clothing because, to be honest, you're not going to see them. So use their clothing, what they're wearing against the backdrop to make them stand out. Framing is another one. Framing is really good. If you've got a building or a window, for example, um, where you can frame someone walking through that shot or someone just happens to be standing there, that's also a really nice photograph. Slogans, you'll see this a lot with street photography, people utilizing slogans. If I'm really honest, you've got to be in the right place at the right time to capture these. They are really difficult to do. Playing on words is brilliant. It works really, really well in street photography. Obviously, I've mentioned panning. This is one of my favorite techniques. Now, if you're starting out and you are a little bit nervous, there is something called shoot from the hip. This is difficult. You've got to get your camera settings right. I would probably recommend using a larger aperture, just so you've got a bigger area that's in focus. Get your settings right. You probably want to shoot with a faster shutter speed, 250, 400, depending on what you're shooting. If it's a person walking towards you, for example, make sure your ISO is correct, make sure your exposure is right, and then literally you're going to have your camera at your hip, you're going to press your focus button, and you're going to shoot and keep your fingers crossed that your shot is still in focus but it's a way it's a very discreet way of shooting someone without them knowing the final one's called the weaver and i called it the weaver because it's after a colleague of mine who introduced me to this technique and i love this we are now going to go through and tell you how i just shot that this doesn't work all the time i will be honest with you you've really got to be selective on how this works i am going to do a specific video on this because i think it's awesome this is what's known as a marmite shot you'll hear me say this a lot on my channel it's a marmite shot you either love it or hate it it's very abstract very different so what we're going to do really is to get this shot you've got to bring your exposure down at the moment we're shooting long exposure i'm shooting for about six to eight seconds my ISO is 100 and my aperture is f8. We can't do that. I want to be shooting about 1.6 of a second, a sixth of a second, something like that, or a third of a second. So I'm now going to drop my aperture down to f4, um, and then I'm going to get my shutter speed down to one third of a second, and then I'm just going to increase the ISO up to 400. Now all we're going to do really is I don't know if you can see it on the back of the camera here, Rory, is we're gonna bring the, it in like that, and then all I'm gonna do is do a quick movement, like that. As the sensor opens, you're gonna move it quickly with your hand, and basically you're gonna zoom out, and it will create that light effect as if the light's coming out of the London eye. So I'm gonna give it a go now and see how we get on. Have some sat look. <laughs> so good, <laughs> so good. And here's Rory's St Paul's Cathedral photographs. There are a couple here that I'm gonna show you that are just like, <laughs> I mean, I would be proud of these. These are amazing, amazing photographs. He's captured the light, and I cannot explain just how difficult this is. It looks easy, but it's not. You can set your camera up, you can put your tripod down, you can get your composition right, but if you get your timing wrong and the exposure length incorrect, it just doesn't look right. If you're looking for more tips and tricks and advice on photography, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell, but I will be back very, very soon with some more videos. Toolkit, guys. See you soon.